Welcome back for part two of the 2004 Honda Pilot trailer hitch installation. All right, on to mounting the hitch. It's recommended that the mufflers drop, but I was able to remove the hitch at the salvage yard without doing so. It's really very simple to do if a lubricant such as 3M silicone paste is applied, which we'll do here. What worked great when I mounted the hitch on my truck was to use my knees to hold it up while I started a couple bolts in the center. Since I have to roll fairly far under the car on my creeper, I've donned a hard hat to protect my head. We'll get all the bolts situated, then we'll tighten them down to spec. Okay, I'm using a 3 8 inch torque wrench and a 17 millimeter socket to tighten the two center mounting bolts to 42 foot-pounds. I then switched to a half inch torque wrench and a 19 millimeter socket to tighten the four outer bolts to 75 foot-pounds. Next we'll rehang the muffler which should go easily because of the silicone paste. Let's get the wiring installed and wrap this up. I opened the rear cargo cover then pried the rear sill free. Here's the connector we're going to tap into. And we'll run the wiring through this grommet. And out this grommet here.
I test fit the wiring then cut it around 15 inches from the module so the splice would remain inside the cargo area. One mistake I made is that electrical tape wrapped around the four wires got chafed by the car's sheet metal because I didn't add lubricant such as silicone paste before feeding it through. As you can see, the Hopkins 4-way flat connector did not fit in the Kurt bracket. I tried enlarging the bracket slot and finding a different connector at the local stores, but I eventually settled on replacing the Hopkins 43105 wiring kit with the Kurt 55336 kit. I also had to replace the bracket I had modified, which was only a couple dollars. Since the Kurt's wiring package is flat, I pulled the wires apart then taped them together with electrical tape so they look like the Hopkins wiring. To splice the wiring, I'm using the Klein Catapult 11063W wire stripper and cutter tool to strip off about 3 quarters of an inch of the 14 gauge sheathing. Check out the review of this tool on the DIY Apprentice channel. One at a time, I slipped the blue self-soldering butt connector from the Kujet kit I bought on Amazon. Link is in the description. Then I use a heat gun to melt the solder and shrink the tubing, moving back and forth to evenly distribute the heat. Don't go too long with the heat. Being a little eager to make sure the Kurtz connector fit in the bracket, I forgot to slip the cover onto the wiring, but I made it work. I added a zip tie to keep the wiring from getting snagged. You may also want to apply a little sealant to the hole in the grommet under the car to keep moisture out.
Before declaring this job done, I tested the wiring. I have the black probe for my multimeter in the ground port on the left. Then I put the red probe in the third port from the left and turn on the left turn signal. The voltage is around 11 volts when the signal is lit. I repeated this test for the right turn signal, placing the red probe in the fourth port from the left, again around 11 volts when the signal was lit. For the last test, I just turned on the marker lights, which is one click on the stock for the headlights, while the red probe was in the second port from the left, and I got a steady 11 volts. And that's it. All right, so there you have it. There's a saw on the trailer hitch receiver on the 2004 Honda Pilot. And that's the one thing that I like about this particular car. It is a true SUV, and that's where the word utility comes in, and that it's very useful. You can tow a pretty good amount of weight with this particular car. So hopefully this information was helpful, and thanks for watching.